Hello, welcome to this rapid overview of the main changes we've brought into GreenSheets mapping. The first thing that will strike you when you arrive is that there's now a big map window. And we've done that intentionally before you log in so that members and non-members can get ready and easy access to where protected sites are across the UK. If you click on the layers button, that's where you can find them. So the first set is ones of national importance, and these are triple SIs in England, Wales and Scotland and ASSIs in Northern Ireland, and they're in green. Then we've got a smaller subset of European or international level sites. These are SACs in the blue and SPAs in the purple for the European level and also Ramsar sites in grey, which are in fact an international designation. So those are your main protected sites. We've also brought in another layer, and this one is a very bespoke layer because DEFRA are currently consulting on an interim license for game bird release on or near to European sites of nature conservation. So it's just for England and it's basically 500 metres from SACs and SPAs. That's really confusing to visualise what that looks like. So we've made that layer and brought it in. And that's in this sort of peach colour. All these layers are available on every map window across the entire site. So if you're a member and log in, you can use this information wherever you wish. And that's our first main change. The next section we've updated is the Seen It section. This is where people have been adding as many records of biodiversity as they like, and they've been able to see them in a map view and then underneath listed out. And that's been great, apart from the fact that they're not being able to interrogate them or filter them at all. Well, you can now. We've added this reporting section here, where you see all your records to start with, and then you can set some filter criteria on the left hand side. So I'm going to look for woodcock. I could set some date ranges when I only want woodcock records and some other things too. When I've set what I want, I press a search button and it filters my records down. I can also see those as a list view as well. And I could also choose to export them to a CSV file if I needed to share them with a landowner or partner, for example. So this is a big change and a very welcome change for everybody. Another place we've made a great change is in the custom map section. Whenever you create either a new custom map or edit a pre-existing one, you'll find there's a new button called buffer. And what that will do is make a larger copy of any map feature you choose. So let's do an example. I've got a game cover and I've got a red semicircle showing a potential gun line. I would like to see what 300 meters looks like from that so if I can figure out whether it's safe to shoot or whether I can manage the risk by a shoot briefing. So let's click the buffer tool and then click on this red semicircle for my gun line. I've got some pre-selected buffer sizes and the 300 meter one is the one I want for fallout a shot. I could set my own if I wanted to. Then I'm going to pick a style. I don't fancy the default blue. I quite fancy this dotted red. And then I create the buffer. And what I get on the map is exactly what I've asked for. 300 meters from that gun line and what it looks like. So I can see shooting Straight ahead and to right, I've got safe fallout of shot, no buildings, no roads. Shooting to the left, I've got buildings and a road. So I'll have to decide whether I can manage that risk by a good shoot briefing about where is safe to shoot or whether I need to change the orientation of that gun line. The buffer tool works off anything. It will work off points and it'll work off boundary information as well, including the shoot boundary or this game cover boundary. So it's a very useful and powerful tool to help you visualize what distance looks like from particular map features. We've made a change to the Bagdit area as well. When you're making a visit, some people need to record exactly where they were. 
So if we look at the game shoot example and add a visit for it, when the form comes up, we now have a new box for grid reference. Click on the magnifying glass, it shows us the shoot boundary, and we just click on the map to show where we were. The grid reference is generated, and we click on visit details to get back to our form, having safely captured exactly where that shot was taken. Then we just fill in the rest of the information and save the visit. To help us get that information back out, we've made a change to the reporting section as well. So when you want to select sites, you can select as you have done in the past by shoot boundary. But if you want to easily pick up those places with a national grid reference only, a grid reference only, you can use the shoot map function. You can zoom into the area of interest. You can click this button for draw a rectangle click and drag it over the area you're interested in, and then click on view the report. Check the rest of the details are correct. So I'm date filtered to records just this year, and then run the report. I get a summary in the bottom, and I get my details in this next tab here. And that shows you the grid reference as I slide along, any comments I've made and the species and I can get them out of the system as a CSV file for sharing perhaps back with the landowner as part of my call record plan. So a change based on feedback from members, which will be very, very helpful for those who need that detail, but isn't mandatory for those who don't. So that's your main updates. Bagdit is now capable of recording the exact grid reference where you were shooting if you wish. CNIT now allows you to filter and interrogate the records you put in. Custom Maps has a great new buffering tool to help you visualise distance from anything you put onto the map. And let's not forget, every map window now has quick and ready access to where protected sites are throughout the UK. Thanks for watching.